Hello and welcome to this remote site monitoring tutorial. This is going to be a quick introduction to remote site monitoring, including what you must monitor, how to design a remote site monitoring system, and how to minimize your costs. In this tutorial, I'll be covering a couple of topics, including where do you start with remote site monitoring, how do you monitor various pieces of equipment, and how to plan your overall monitoring deployment. So with remote site monitoring, where do you start? Well, the first thing you want to do is survey where you are now. Uh, what monitoring gear do you already have in your network? Uh, what equipment needs to be monitored that isn't being monitored right now? And what transport is available at your sites? So if you deploy a monitoring system, you have some means to send alarms and other information back to yourself. Uh, second, you're going to want to define your monitoring goals. What's the ideal system going to look like? What are its various components? Just how's it built? And third, you want to plan your monitoring upgrade. Are you going to be upgrading all at once, or do you need to spread this out across several budgets? And what are the highest priority functions? If we need to choose certain things to be done first and others to be done later, you know, what's the priority chain there? So let's break down that question, what monitoring gear do you have, a little further. You might ask questions like, am I starting from scratch? Am I inheriting an older system and I need to add some upgrades or replace some parts? Or am I adding monitoring because I've added new sites to my network and they're simply brand new and they have nothing yet? So one way to wrap your head around this concept of what you are monitoring is to say, well, what important things am I not monitoring? And so some key things that you should be monitoring include telecom and transport gear. That includes switches, routers, sonnet, fiber, microwave radios, that sort of thing. Your power supplies are obviously very important. You can't do anything if your sites go dark. So that includes commercial IC power, but also your battery backup plants, your rectifiers, generators, UPS systems. We're also talking about building and facility alarms when we talk about remote site monitoring. Intrusion, are people breaking in? Entries, open doors, is there a fire? Do you have smoke, flooding on the ground? You know, what kinds of things are happening in terms of the environment around your equipment? And also environmental conditions like temperature and humidity. Uh, equipment can't function if it falls outside of those temperature and humidity ranges, so we need to monitor them and make sure they stay within limits. Some general principles for monitoring sites. One, you want to be reasonably paranoid. You don't want to be out of control, but in most cases people tend to be a little too casual when it comes to monitoring their sites. You really want to make sure that you're considering all the possible things that could go wrong and how to put a reasonable system in place that has a great chance of detecting those and warning you so you can fix problems before they become big problems. Uh, the second principle is that more detail generally equals less waste. There is a point in which you'll bury an operator with too much detail and alarms, but most companies haven't bumped up against that problem. Uh, usually it's a question of having too little detail. So you want to make sure that your system is going to say Specifically, this is what this problem is about, this is what this alarm means, not just some generic major alarm message and you have no idea what it is. You want to know where the problem is, what it is, who needs to go out with what tools, what time, all kinds of detail so that you can send the right people the first time and not let problems fester. The third general principle is to buy upgradable and scale up. Uh, if you buy a system that where you're locked into a proprietary protocol or a single manufacturer's equipment, uh, that's not good for anybody. You're going to be trapped. You have to upgrade all at once. If you ever want to change systems, you have to do that all at once. You want to buy something that's extensible, where you can buy pieces of it now and add more later, and switch between manufacturers if necessary. Uh, you want to have an open system. Fourth principle, plan for the next five years. Uh, don't be focused on just what you need today. Think about where is the company going, what's our growth, uh, are, is this system going to accommodate our needs both now and in the foreseeable future. So to plan your monitoring deployment, first you want to review the lists I just went over, the types of equipment that should be monitored, the general principles. Ask yourself how well are you currently fulfilling each of those ideas. Second, you want to think about historical incidents that should have been caught, problems that were allowed to grow and become a really big, messy, expensive incident. Uh, it may well be that you're doing research today because you have a very recent incident at the top of your mind, but also consider what's happened in the last several years. If we're going to be just deploying a monitoring system, are there other things that can be solved at the same time? There's usually multiple value pieces that you can get out of a single system. And third, be sure that you consult an expert. Don't try to do monitoring all on your own. Uh, there are a lot of great resources out there. Uh, be sure that you're consulting outside sources and not just making things up as you go along. 
One outside source that I really recommend that you visit is the website of DPS Telecom. DPS is a remote site monitoring equipment manufacturer and their website dpstele.com has a lot of great articles that will teach you about the concepts of remote site monitoring different things you need to do and pitfalls to watch out for as you start your deployment. If you'd also like to discuss your project with someone who knows quite a bit about remote site monitoring, you can call DPS at 1-800-693-0351. I hope this remote site monitoring tutorial has been helpful for you. For more information, I encourage you to watch more of my videos or visit dpstele.com or call the 1-800 number shown below.